Welcome to Networking Rx, a podcast devoted to helping business professionals like you enhance your networking skills in order to become more proficient giving and receiving quality business referrals and improving the overall quality of your life and the lives of those around you. The Networking Rx podcast is a production of AmSpirit Business Connections, an organization whose mission is to empower business success through networking. Welcome back for another episode. I'm Frank Agan, founder and president of AmSpirit Business Connections, and you're listening to the Networking Rx. Today, I want to talk about using your ears. One of the first people, one of the early people I interviewed was a guy by the name of Brian Miller. And Brian Miller is a magician, he's an author, he's a speaker, he's a podcast host. Um, I quote from him often, I love this quote, he's got a book out there called Three New People, Make the Most of Your Daily Interactions and Stop Missing Amazing Opportunities. Um, But the quote I love from that book, and I use it often, uh, and I'll tag him in it every once in a while, um, but the quote he has is, you have no idea what kind of opportunities await you just on the other side of that next connection and he shares his his interactions with people and and the title of the book three new people comes down to um, really his insight that over the course of a lifetime you meet about 80,000 people or you, or you interact with 80,000 people and some of those are really transactional uh, right but you know there are three new people if you stop and do the math um the average lifetime and the number of days in a year and so on and so forth you work the math it comes out to three people every day and so that's you know that's really the genesis of his book but in in talking with him early on um he shared a very generous person shared a lot of uh, interesting things with me um And one of the things he shared with me was a a white paper or a short article that he wrote, How to Use Your Ears, The Art of Actively Listening to People. Ears is an acronym, acronym, E-A-R-S. And in there, he really kind of talks talks about active listening. What a shock. It's in the title. Um, But he kind of reiterates what he says in the book and that we meet 80,000 people over the course of a year and it amounts to three new people every day and he he acknowledges some of their just are just transactional you know what would you like in your coffee well i want this this and this you know that's you know that's one of your eighty thousand people but he says you know i wake up every single morning and ask myself this question will i use those three opportunities today to make my life and the lives of the people i meet better um and he he indicates that at first you know it was no he didn't you know it was just like yeah and then he kind of talks about the shortcomings with relationships he had in his life in in this short article um, but he he indicates in the article he says it's not enough to care about someone it's not enough to understand them they have to feel understood they have to feel cared about and he acknowledges that he wasn't doing that and this all kind of leading into uh, his four-part system for for deploying that for for allowing people to know that he understands them and knows that he cares about them which is really kind of the building blocks of most any relationships Um, and so what I want to do is uh, and I tried to find the article out there um, link to it if you do a search I'll I'll I will uh, I'll put something in the show notes to allow you to kind of search on this, and if I can find it, I will. Um, but he he indicates, uh, well, if I was, what I was going to say is if you do a search on Brian Miller ears, just the word ears, there'll be, there'll be a number of pages, a number of podcasts where he comes up talking about this. He's, uh, again, he's a magician turned professional speaker, author, very pro- prolific writer, um, very engaged out there, um, but anyhow, uh, do a search. I'll try and find something to put in the show notes as well. But let's go through his ears acronym. The first is eye contact, and he he makes a really interesting point here. Yeah, we know we're supposed to have eye contact, um, and he kind of uses uh, you know, um, not a hypothesis, but he uh, he he 
gives us a, an example of, you know, when you're talking, when we talk, what we tend to do is we tend to look all over the place. So if somebody says, tell me about your childhood, it's a natural thing to kind of be looking off and you're, you're looking in your mind, figuratively speaking, and recol, uh, recalling things. Um, and so you're looking off to the left, looking to the right when you're talking. And he says, when you look up and the person is on their phone or looking away or something, you don't feel like, well, you feel like you're being ignored, like they're not listening at all. And to be honest, that takes all the wind out of what you have to say. And so, we, you know, we essentially says in the EARS acronym is that when you're p passive in a conversation, when you're the passive participant, when you're the listener, you need to ma ma maintain eye contact. And there are, there are a lot of articles out there talking about, you know, 70% of the time you ought to be looking at them, um, you know, and it's, you know, you're, you're not, it's not a dead stare, right? We all know when it's uncomfortable. You're looking at them, you're looking away, um, but when you're looking away, it's just a quick glance and then you're back at them. And I think it's, it's, it's natural for us to do that, to kind of check our surroundings, even when we're on Zoom or whatever type of virtual platform we're using, it's natural to kind of look away. Um, you know, there's a d distraction, you're checking the time, whatever it might be. Um, so the first acronym, the first letter in the acronym I EARS is eye contact. Okay, moving on, the A is avoid distractions. Avoid distractions. And that kind of plays into eye contact. It's probably a little bigger than, than eye contact. Well, it is a little bigger than eye contact. And we, we all become distracted with things. It's just, you know, there's lots going on. Our, there's lots going on in our lives. Uh, he talks in the article, he talks about technology, you know, and, and we have phones. And uh, he, he started out as a, a magician in a restaurant, a table mag magician, coming up and saying, hey, I'm a magician here and would entertain the family. Um, the kids would be enthralled by his card tricks or whatever. Um, and it's easy to grab somebody's attention. But he said, I started to notice that people would be at dinner together and everybody, everyone would be engrossed in their own phone and not in conversation with one another. Um, but what he, what he says in here, I'm quoting from his, his article, technology is not going to stop evolving. Social media is not going away. And I don't believe that it should. However, like anything in life, there's a time and a place for it. We need to make a concerted effort to avoid distractions during conversations with other people. Um, and he he then goes on to say that part of the problem is is that we all think we're really good multitaskers. And, and to a degree we are. I mean, I can do things and listen to somebody. I routinely will sit and work while a football game's on or a basketball game or whatever it is, soccer. Um, and it's for me, it's enjoyable. I'm actually getting things done and I'm catching the game. Certainly American football is is easy to do because a play lasts, you know, roughly five seconds and then there's 40 seconds between plays. And so you can kind of do certain things. I, I can't do detailed writing. I can't do, you know, drafting of, of articles or podcasts or whatever uh, while I'm watching a, a, a game. But there are certain things I can do. I can be, you know, doing planning and setting up the week and, and so on and so forth. But we do think we're we're good at multitasking and and again it's it, this is very similar to eye contact um but a little more involved but i remember once i was uh, invited downtown to meet with somebody somebody um somebody iconic influential and i thought it was a great opportunity i got there got in their office and started to have a conversation and the, the, the first thing out of their mouth was you know, I'm listening, never mind me, I'm packing to go on a trip. And so they're, you know, looking in their desks and their drawers and saying, you know, yep, I'm listening, I'm listening, I'm listening. And you got to wonder how well they're really listening. Um, and I, I don't want to say I was, I was grateful for the opportunity to meet with them. And I don't want to say I was offended, but I was certainly a little bit put out. I just knew that it wasn't, I wasn't hitting as well as I could. Um, and so... We need to try and be attentive to people, be attentive to what they're saying. Eye contact's part of it, um, but you can, 
you can have eye contact and not be listening. Um, I guess it's it's harder to not be listening. Um, but, you know, we just need to avoid distractions. We need to be dialed into what the other person has to say. So the first thing, eye contact. Second, avoid distraction. On to the R. The R in the EARS acronym. Reflection. Reflection. Uh, and it's a great way of demonstrating that you're listening um, is to reflect upon what they're saying. Not just the words, but just, okay, why have they said that thing? Why was it important that they shared that? Um, and I, in trying to do this, will often ask myself, okay, was that particular comment, was that just red herring, something thrown in there, or is this something relevant to the bigger piece? Um, and sometimes people will fire things out, and they do, it doesn't really relate to the story it's just again red herring um, meaning it's just kind of pointless to be there it doesn't need to be there sometimes it comes back into play and but you know part of being a good listener is to kind of reflect on the things that they're saying um, you know why did they say it you know basically you set about actively affirming that you're listening, uh, you know, okay, you mentioned this particular fact, why was that important, or how did you feel, what were you, what were you feeling when you, your family moved all around the country, um, was it hard going to these various schools, and, uh, you know, you're putting yourself in their story, you're putting yourself into what they're doing, and that's the, that's the reflection piece of it. So let me quote from Brian's uh, article here. Um, It's impossible to use reflection if you're not really listening. And we all know that. You know what it sounds like when someone isn't properly, properly listening to you. You finish telling a story or making a point and you're met with a moment of silence when they realized that you've stopped, stopped speaking. Um, or that the noise has stopped, and then they'll look up from their phone, or they'll redirect themselves from the restaurant menu, um, and basically say something like, huh, or interesting. And I think we've all been in those situations where that's happening, we've said something, and you just kind of wonder if anybody's listening at all. Um, Let's put it this way, it's not fun to be on that side of the conversation, where somebody's not making eye contact with you, where they're continually distracted, um, and obviously if, if they're not doing, certainly the first two, reflecting is not going to be, is not going to happen. And you just wonder, am I, am I just, I'm just wasting air here. You know, I, I've been in situations like this, and it's, I almost feel like I just want to throw something in there. Like when you, you were in, uh, when I was in college, I can't speak for anybody else, but when I was in college, we always wondered if the professors were reading the term papers. You know, you got 40 people in the class, everybody writing a 40-page paper. God, it's 1,600 pages on m- macroeconomics. Oh my gosh, you think he's really reading it? We should just insert in there in the middle. You know, if you get this far, I'll buy you a beer. Kind of a a, a commentary. Um, and when I've had conversations with people I'm like they're not even listening to me they're not really even listening Um, I should just kind of fire something in there so anyhow eye contact avoid distractions and reflections EAR and the S is summarize Um, and really this final step becomes the easiest if you've done the first three it actually becomes fun um, but you know, summarizing, you've had eye contact, you're avoiding distractions, you're reflecting. So you are really engrossed in it. Um, and essentially it's using the reflection technique, um, to kind of pull together what the person's saying, you know, oh, you know, so you were an army brat and you really had to move around a lot. Um, and you know, that's the reason why you're really good at meeting people. You know, or that's the reason why this, or, um, you know, you're just, you know, summarizing whatever they're saying, you know, paraphrasing. They talk for five minutes and in 20, 30 seconds, you're able to, you're able to wrap it all up into just a quick little, quick little summary. And then from there, what you can do is you can go 
you can go and ask another question. And then that question leads to the next question, leads to the next question. Obviously, you don't want that going on forever. But you can carry a wonderful conversation with saying very little. And the person, because you are have eye contact, you're avoiding distractions, you're reflecting, you're summarizing, they feel not only understood, but they feel cared about, as Brian indicated at the beginning of the article. It's just a building blocks of a good relationship. Uh, and his, his EARS acronym, it, it sounds overly simple. Um, it sounds like common sense, but it's not necessarily common practice. This, this all just gives us something to think about as we're having conversations with people, whether it's on Zoom, whether it's face-to-face, or certainly even over the phone. Whatever the case, Brian's acronym EARS is important. It's important. Uh, Obviously, on the phone, you're not going to be able to have eye contact, but you can certainly be avoiding distractions and reflecting and summarize. Uh, Let me just kind of summarize here with a quick last quote from Brian. Eye contact makes your conversational partner feel like they're being heard. Avoiding distractions will help you stay focused on what is being said. Reflection confirms to them that you're absorbing the details rather than just getting the gist. Summarizing is the final conversation checkpoint to avoid miscommunication and unnecessary arguments. Great article. Um, again, it's there, there's lots of podcasts out there uh, where he talks about this. Um, and if I can find a good link to put in the show notes, I will. But to wrap up, uh, thanks for listening. Uh, again, we are looking for partners t- for uh, the AmSpirit Business Connections program. What I mean by partners, people to, uh, I guess, just even start chapters. People want to start chapters. People who want to be part of the leadership team. Uh, people who would like an ownership interest by being a franchisee. One of those three things, uh, any of those uh, certainly is is beneficial happy to meet people happy to talk about it Uh, go through the whole program if you're interested reach out email me using the email in the show notes or the one we provide at the end of the podcast thanks for joining us on the networking rx podcast please put what you've learned into action today and let us know if you have questions comments or ideas for future topics you can email them to us at podcast at amspirit.com That's A-M-S-P-I-R-I-T dot com. Finally, so you never miss an episode, be sure to subscribe to the Networking Rx podcast through iTunes, Overcast, or however you receive your podcasts. Now get out and network with someone. The Networking Rx podcast is a copyright production of Amspirit Business Connection. All rights reserved.